All right, welcome back. Um, if you are studying differential equations, then there's a good chance at some point uh, along the way someone is going to ask you to find a fundamental solution set to a second order linear homogeneous differential equation. Um, basically, that is an equation that looks like this. And uh, in, order to, in order to do this, in order to find a fundamental solution set, you're going to be given, uh, you're going to need to be given initial conditions. Um, and sometimes you might just be asked to solve, you know, from scratch to find the, the solutions and then, you know, verify if it's a fundamental solution set. Or other times you might just be given some solutions. So you might be given a solution like y1 at t and y2 at t and, and asked to show that they are a fund or determine if they are a fundamental solution set. Now, by the principle of superposition, if you're given one solution and another, you can add them up like this with some uh, unknown constants here. And we can say that this uh, this would be like the general solution um, or a general solution if uh, basically if this uh, if we can find values c1 and c2 here that satisfy the initial conditions. And that's actually the first step in determining if you have a fundamental solution set. Um, basically, you want to confirm that your initial value conditions do satisfy your differential equation or your solution. Um, and then the other thing that you need to do is this thing called the Ronsky, and it looks like this. And it's basically just the determinant of this little matrix that we construct using y1, y2, and their derivatives. So you, you will need to have two solutions to do this. Um, basically, we just compute the determinant, and then uh, so long as it's not equal to zero, then we know that we will have uh, that these two solutions will form a fundamental solution set. And uh, basically, the reason why this isn't uh, isn't zero, it, it just comes from the way that we derive the Ronsky, and it has to do with using Kramer's rule. And, and this thing basically is a determinant along the way, and it can't be equal to zero. Um, but I wouldn't really worry so much about deriving the Ronsky, in because usually it's you're just going to be asked to use it. You're, the question will be basically, you know, determine if this is a fundamental solution set. They're going to give you two solutions, or you'll have to find them yourself. Um, and then basically, you just use the Ronsky, and it's really fast. And then find the answer and you move on with life. So um, let's take a look at an example. This differential equation was used in a previous video and in that video um, I'll put a link to it up here in the top right corner. Uh, feel free to go check it out. Uh, what we did in that video is we came to the conclusion that this was the general solution. Um, in that video we weren't given initial conditions but uh, I've just added them in here for the purpose of this video. So let's recognize right now that e to the negative 2t is our first solution y1 and e to the negative 4t is our second solution y2. We're going to be using those in the round scan uh, when we do that but first uh, let's do our first step where we're just going to kind of find out what the actual solution is and make sure that these initial conditions check out. So let's plug in some numbers that we know based on this first initial condition. So we have 1 is going to be equal to c1, uh, this e to the negative 2, 0, just this whole thing becomes 1, so it just basically disappears. And uh, plus c2, again, this e to the negative 4 times 0, this all gets set to a 1, so that you just don't see it here. When we take y prime at t, uh, we get negative 2 c1 e to the negative 2 t minus 4 c2 e to the negative 4 t. And if we plug in our initial conditions here from y prime at 0 equals 0, we get this is equal to 0 is equal to minus 2c1 minus 4c2. With a little bit of rearranging here, we're going to see that c1 is equal to negative 2c2. What we can do is we can plug that in back up here. So this is equal to negative 2c2 plus c2. And then we're going to find out that c2 is equal to negative 1. All right, we can plug that in again um, because we had 1 is equal to c1 plus c2, um, but we know that c2 is equal to negative 1, so we're going to find out that c2 is equal to positive 2. All right, so that's awesome. We have found an actual solution, so these initial conditions are pretty valid for us to be using. We have 2e to the negative 2t minus e to the negative 4t. And if you really want to check that this actually uh, validates or is valid in the original differential equation, which we had right here, we can go ahead and do that too. 
and everything cancels out and the left hand side equals the right hand side so that is great that is the first step in us hopefully confirming that we have found a fundamental solution set to this differential equation okay so the second part here is now dealing with the Ronskian. so we have let's write out y1 y2 y1 prime and y2 prime so we have y1 is equal to e to the negative 2t y2 is equal to e to the negative 4t and then y1 prime is just uh, simply negative 2e to the negative 2t and y2 prime is just equal to negative 4e to the negative 4t. So if we just take the determinant of them in this matrix form we have y1 times y2 prime minus y2 times y1 prime and that all simplifies down to negative 2e to the negative 6t. And this will never equal zero because of the exponential here. Uh, there's no value that we can plug in here that will make this zero. So that tells us that this is satisfied and this was satisfied. So y1 and y2, which we had right here and right here, do form a fundamental set of solutions to this differential equation.